Hello everyone, it is Gail from Ticket to Anywhere, and it is Friday, and you know what that means, it's time for a Fragment Friday. But before I do that, I am just going to say I am sorry for not posting any reviews on my blog recently. Um, last week, not too much of an excuse there. I mean, I was busy, I went to two different movies and to an author signing and such, but it was primarily me just being lazy. But this week, you have my sister to blame because for Christmas she pre-ordered me this, The Sims Medieval, and it arrived on Tuesday and it's been sucking up like all of my time since. Um, this is going to be like my favorite Sims game. Um, you can do quests and stuff and some of the tasks you do on quests are like get your Sim drunk. So it's been kind of fun and you can make wizards and wizards cast spells and you can do spies too, but there's like something broken in the game, and so I haven't been able to build my spy yet, but I hope that gets fixed soon because I want a spy. But it's been really fun, and if you follow me on Twitter, then you've actually been getting some like random updates of things that I've been doing with my Sims between with a conversation between me, Bookalicious Pam, because she also has been playing this game a lot since Tuesday, and um soon Danny Johns as well because <laughs> because of all of my talk and Pam's talk and just her need for procrastination she's gone out and bought this game as well so yeah look for some interesting conversations there on Twitter with Sims Medieval and so because my time has been kind of sucked away by this game because I'm just an addict, um, no other words for it. I haven't really been reading much, but I did get a really cool book in the mail this week. It is Ruby Red by um, Kirsten Gear. It's the international bestseller. Um, I think this is the first time that it's published here in the U.S. or will be published here in the U.S. sometime in May. I forgot to get the exact date for you, but it's coming out from Henry Holt and Company, and I just love this cover. This is the art cover. And you can't really see it very well, but it's like, the red on this is all pretty shiny, you can kind of see it there. And then the letters are bumpy, and then throughout the cover there are these like raised red things, and they almost look like little garnets. And I just think that's really cool, and the final finished copy has like, if it's the one that's coming out, this one, Shonen Gundry's, there's like a picture here of a girl, like a cameo, and then there's something else here, but they seem very similar, and I just, I just think it's a really great cover, and I was very excited when this one came because it just sounds really cool, it's about time travel and such, and so I thought I would do my Friday Fragment from this. Um, I haven't really read it yet, so I'm only going to read you the prologue, because really, prologues tend not to spoil, so, um... But before I do that, yeah. you know what, I'm just going to jump right into the prologue. Okay, Hyde Park, London, 8 April 1912. As she fell to her knees and burst into tears, he looked all around the park, just as he'd expected. It was, an, it was empty at this early hour. Jogging wouldn't be fashionable for a long time yet, and it was too cold for the beggars who slept on park benches with nothing but newspaper over them. He carefully wrapped the chronograph in its cloth and slipped it into his backpack. She was huddled beside one of the trees on the north bank of the Serpentine on a carpet of faded crocuses. Her shoulders were shaking and her sobs sounded like the desperate cries of an injured animal. He could hardly bear it, but he knew from experience that it was better to leave her alone. So he sat down beside her in the dew-covered grass, gazed at the smooth surface of the water, and waited. Have tissues been invented yet? She finally sniffed turning her tear-stained face to him. No idea, he said. But I can offer you a monogram hanky. Dead right for this period. Jan, did you mention from Grace? She gave it to me, don't worry. You can blow your nose on it all you like, princess. She smiled wryly as she handed him the handkerchief. No, now it's ruined. Sorry about that. Oh, never mind, he said. Just so long as you've stopped crying. Tears shot straight back into her eyes. We shouldn't have abandoned her. She needs us. We have no idea of our bluff will work. And no chance of ever finding out now. We'd have been even less used to her dead. If we could have only hidden away with her somewhere, far away, under other names, until she was old enough to... He interrupted her, shaking his head firmly. They'd have found us anywhere we went. We've discussed that a thousand times already. We didn't abandon her. We did the only right thing. We made it possible for her to live in safety, at least for...
for the next sixteen years. For a moment she said nothing. Somewhere in the distance a horse whinnied and voices drifted over from West Carriage Drive, although it was nearly dark now. I know you're right, she said at last. It just hurts so much to know we'll never see her again. She gently rubbed her red-rimmed eyes. At least we're not going to be bored. Sooner or later they'll track us down, even here, and set the guardians on us. He's not about to give up either the chronograph or his plans without a fight. He smiled, seeing the light of adventure come back into her eyes. Maybe we'll outwit him after all. Either that, or in the end, the other device won't work. Then he'll be finished. <laughs> right. But if it does work, we're the only ones who can stop him. That's just why we've done the right thing. He stood up, brushed the earth off his jeans. Come on, this damn grass is wet, and you're supposed to be taking things easy. She let him pull her up to his feet and kiss her. What are you, you going to do now? Look for a place to hide the chronograph? She asked, looking undecidedly at the bridge separating Hyde Park from Kensington Gardens. Yes. But first, let's raid the Guardian's deposits and stock up with cash. Then we should take the trans train to Southampton. The Titanic leaves on Wednesday, her maiden voyage. She left. So that's your idea of taking things easy? But, right, I'm with you. He was so glad she could laugh again that he kissed her once more. I was really thinking, you know that... You know that out at ships... Ah, sorry. He was so glad she could laugh again that he kissed her once more. I was really thinking, you know, that at sea, a ship's captain can marry people, don't you, princess? You want to marry me? On board the Titanic? Are you out of your mind? It would be so romantic. Except for the bit with the iceberg. She laid her head on his chest and buried her face in his jacket. I love you so much, she murmured. Will you be my wife? Yes, she said, her face still buried against his chest, but only if we leave the ship in Queenstown, Ireland, at the latest. Ready for the next adventure, princess? Ready when you are, she said softly. So, that is the prologue of Ruby Red by Kirsten Gear. It sounds really good. I can't wait to read the rest of it and figure out what's going on and what that prologue is all about. And I hope you enjoyed this week's fragment. Um, be sure to let me know what you're reading, what your fragment is, and be sure to follow James over at bookshiclub.blogspot.com and put up your links there next month when he puts up the new Mr. Linky. Till next time, bye.